In video 8 for activity 2, we will jump into using Solver in Excel. The first thing I need to do is enter my formulas. So let's go back to the Excel file we've been using for activity 2. The first thing I need to do is enter the formula I'm going to use as the objective cell. Remember, in this case, I'm trying to calculate the number of units I need to break even. By break even, I mean where profit is equal to zero. So ultimately, I need a formula for profit in my spreadsheet. I'm going to break that profit formula down into a few steps to make that more clear. So here on row 39, I have each component of that profit formula. So I'm going to end up entering a formula for revenue and a formula for cost and then taking the difference of those to calculate profit. In some of the very first videos we did for activity two, we covered the formulas for revenue and cost. I won't review them here in great detail, I'm just going to go ahead and input them. So if you need to go back and review those formulas, make sure you go back to those respective videos. In order to set up the revenue and cost formula, I'm just going to put a number in this units cell. It does not matter what the number is because I'm going to change it in a little bit. I just need a number in there as a filler. So let's go ahead and just use one. I'm just going to type the number one into cell A40. Next, I'm going to enter the revenue formula into cell B40. Remember, revenue equals price, which I have up here in B13, times quantity. And this time I'm going to use the quantity that is there right next to this cell in cell A40 and hit enter. Since I already had price in this spreadsheet, I just cell referenced up here to the variable at the top of the spreadsheet. Similarly, for costs, I'm going to type in the formula we used before, which is just variable cost, which I can reference up here, times units, which I have here in the formula, so just to the left, plus fixed cost of 500 and hit enter. And again, I just pulled those numbers from up here where I had the variables. So variable cost times the quantity I had down here plus the fixed cost. Now that I have revenue and cost calculated, I can simply calculate profit. Profit is just equal to revenue minus cost. So I calculated that as cell B40 minus C40. I get a negative number right now because I'm not selling enough units to break even or generate a profit. And we know that's okay. We know that's actually right because we already know from our manual calculation, break even was 33.33 units. Selling only one unit would give us a negative profit. Let's double check those rules that you wrote down in your note packet from the previous video. Remember we said our objective cell, which in this case is this profit right here, needs to be a formula. So we have a formula there, so that's good. Nothing in that formula is hard-coded, so that's also excellent. Our next rule was that the formula has to be dependent on the variable we are going to change or the variable for which we are trying to solve. In this example, remember, we're trying to solve for units where profit is zero. Let's make sure our profit calculation is actually depending on units because right here we can't exactly tell that. It's not cell reference to units here but it is cell reference to revenue and cost. And revenue and cost are both dependent on the number of units. I can also check to make sure that my formula here is going to change when I change the number of units just by changing it here. So if I change units sold from one to five, then I get a new profit number. That's a good sign that says that my formula is actually dependent on the variables here. Changing this number here is also helpful in just making sure that nothing in these formulas is hard-coded, especially that you haven't hard-coded units within these formulas. If you hard-code units into your formula, then profit won't change when you change the number of units here in this cell. Now that everything is set up correctly, let's open up Solver. If you did not yet install Solver, then pause the video here and go to the first page of your note packet for this module and install Solver using the directions that you'll find there. If you have correctly installed Solver, then you should see it 
under the data tab in your menu bar. You can see my solver tool right here. I'm going to select solver, which will open up the dialog box. This is the screenshot you saw in the PowerPoint slides in the last video. Remember, my overall goal here is to calculate the number of units I need for profit to equal zero. So I want to set profit equal to zero. My objective cell is the cell I'm going to set. So what I'm telling Excel is set profit, which I have in this cell here. So I'm just going to cell reference profit. So I'm saying set profit equal to a value of zero. By changing, so think again about what variable we want to change or what variable we're trying to solve. In this case, it's going to be units. So I'm just going to sell reference to where I have units here. So I'm going to click in this bar here under by changing variable cells and select units. The last thing I need to do is just hit solve down here. A menu will pop up now. It is asking me if I want to keep the answers returned by solver or go back to what I had previously. I usually want to keep the answers. But do note that Solver permanently overrides what you had in Excel before. So see how Solver overrode that one that we had here as a placeholder? That's fine because that's what we wanted, but there may be a time where you don't want that to happen. And you cannot undo Solver or go back to the one that we had before. In a simple formula like this, I could just retype the one so it's not a huge deal. But when you're doing more complex spreadsheets with Solver, you might want to go ahead and save them before you move into the Solver function. Since we want to keep them, let's click OK. Now I can see that Solver changed these units or the variable to what it took to make profit equal to zero. So it changed it to that 33.33 we manually calculated for break even. Solver is just doing the algebra for us. It's just solving for Q, just like we did before with a manual calculation. It just did it quite a bit faster, or at least once you get Solver set up, it does it quite a bit faster. So Solver just takes a minute to set up the formulas we need, but once we have done all of that, it is very easy to manipulate Solver. For example, if we wanna know how many units we need to produce to get a profit of 100, we could easily calculate that. In fact, try it. So the question I asked again is, how many units do we need to produce in order to get a profit of $100? Hint, your answer should be 40. So go ahead and open up Solver again and make sure you could solve for getting a profit equal to 100. So you're solving for the number of units to get a profit equal to 100. Go ahead and pause. Welcome back. Let me walk you through that quickly in case you did not get 40 or just want to review. All of my data is already in Solver, so when it pops up, it remembers that I previously had cell referenced profit as what I wanted to set to a certain value, and it remembered that I wanted to do that by changing the variable cell of units. So I wanted to set profit equal to zero by changing the number of units. All I changed in this scenario I just gave you was that I now want to set profit equal to 100 by changing the number of units. So all I need to do here is change that zero to a value of 100 and hit solve. Click OK to keep the solver solutions and it gives me units of 40 and some decimals because solver was just being a little weird there. Solver is really a life-changing tool so I hope you found this video useful. Remember to go back to the previous video where we talked about some of the theory behind Solver and the rules behind Solver to make sure you remember those rules and could apply them to a different situation. In the next video, we will use Solver to calculate the number of units we need to sell in order to make a 15% profit margin.